We're, we're learning today about taking pictures with your phone. There we go. Um, a little breakdown of what we're going to go over today. So like I just said, there are many different mobile devices or smart devices is another term. They're interchangeable. They basically mean the same thing. Um, and then we'll talk about um, the different app or camera app icons um, that you may be seeing on your different devices. We'll go over the basic camera tools. Um, so things that you're going to see, no matter what type of device you have, certain basic tools that you'll still see in each of these different camera apps on your phone. Um, we'll go over some different types of photos and videos that you could take on your device. Um, we'll uh, talk about how you can look through your captured photos. So once you take a picture, how you could look at that picture you just took. Um, we'll talk about the many different, um, oops, sorry, this is blocking my, um, the many different camera apps on different, um, uh, mobile devices. Um, and I'll try and do a live tutorial, um, where I'm going to use, I thought I'd be able to have two devices linked up, but I actually, I only have one Android tablet linked up right now, but I'm going to do a, a little live tutorial where I'll take a picture of a, a plant that I have set up here in my room so that you can see me actively take a picture with my device. Uh, and then I'll just close things up with some more ways you can keep finding more help and keep learning. Um, so with that being said, we'll dive right in. There we go. Um, so like I said in the beginning, there are many brands and models of mobile or smart devices each of these devices will have their own camera app that's pre-downloaded in them. And this is assuming if that device has a physical camera built into them. And when I say a physical camera, I'm referring to the actual physical component, the, um, the actual mechanical camera in the device. So as long as your device has a camera in it, it will have a camera app pre-downloaded inside. There are other apps that you could obviously um, download and get you know, different kinds of camera apps, but there'll be one already in your device for free. You don't necessarily have to download another one. There we go. This slide here is just showing you a few examples of what that camera apps icon will look like. So depending on the type of device you have, you may be looking for one of these kinds of icons in order to tap on. Um, the very first one here in the top left is the most common. Um, it's used on Apple devices as well as some Android devices. So you probably, depending on the type of device, you're probably going to interact with this top left one the most. But there are some other ones here, again, depending on what kind of device you have, especially if it's an Android, since there's so many different brands of Android devices. Um, the camera app on your device may look like one of these. But as you see, even though they are a little different, each of them have a similarity. They're all a camera. It's a, just an image of a camera, or at the very least, the lens of a camera. So that's what you're going to be looking for on your device. You'll look through the different apps that are already downloaded in it, and it'll probably just be called camera. Um, and it'll the icon will look something like this. Now we're going to jump into some of those basic controls that I was talking about. So once you do open the camera app in your device, you're going to see something along the lines of what you see here in these images towards the bottom of your screen. And the capture button is the same thing as the shutter release button. If any of you um, have done photography in the past with a film camera, you may be familiar with that shutter release button, the button that you actually push in order to take the picture. Um, here, button, 
and it's going to be a large circle towards the bottom center of the screen when you open the camera app. And as you see here, it might look slightly different. It might be all white. It might be um, a red center with a white ring. Um, but it's going the center here. And that's the button that you would use to take the picture. So you would open the app, point your camera towards the object in which you're wanting to take the picture, and you can tap that circle in the bottom center in order to capture the photo. Now, some of the other basic camera tools that you're going to be interacting with um, will be flash which is going to pretty universally be represented by a lightning bolt. Now that lightning may be designed slightly differently, exactly like this lightning bolt in the top left corner here, but it's gonna be some form of a lightning bolt and that's referring to your flash. If there's a line going through the lightning bolt or a sort of one of those, um, those like no symbols where it's a circle with a bar going through it like that, like no smoking where it's a picture of a cigarette and it's a circle with a line going through it. Um, you might be seeing something like that, but any line going through the lightning bolt signifies that you've turned off the flash. Some devices may also have an auto flash feature. So when you click on the lightning bolt, it'll give you the option of either turning it on the ambient light around you, meaning the sunlight or the light in the room, um, and it can adjust whether or not you need a flash. Not every device is gonna be able to do this, so if you do click on the little lightning bolt and all it does is put a little line through it, that means on your device, the only option you have is to either have the flash on or have the flash off. And those are the only two options on your particular device. Right below the lightning bolts, you'll see it looks a little bit like a stopwatch or a little clock face. Um, that's a pretty international sign for a photo timer. So if you wanted to set your device down, walk away, and sort of pose for the photo, you can click on the little clock symbol. And it might, again, it might not look exactly like this clock symbol that I have here on... on for. Um, it'll probably be something like 3 seconds versus 10 seconds or 10 seconds versus 30 seconds, but it'll give you certain time ranges and you just tap on it, set your device down, walk away. At the end of that time, it's going to automatically take the picture, no matter what it's pointing at. Now, here um, towards the right, uh, the top right, it says HDR, and then right below it, there's this picture of a sun with sort of like a, a shadowy moon right behind it. Um, both of these will be symbols used for high definition resolution. Now, again, this is another feature that might not be available on all of your devices. It depends on um, the capability of the camera that's in your device. But if you see anywhere, it'll usually be in the top, uh, top, the top of your screen when you open the camera app. And in a moment later in this presentation, I'll show a few examples of when you open the camera app, what it may look like. So in a moment, you'll see where these buttons will be laid out on your screen. Um, but if you see either HDR or one of 
a symbol that looks like a sun with a shadowy moon behind it, it stands for this, high definition resolution. Um, and without getting too bogged down in the specifics and the, the science behind all of it, it really just means that it's going to sense the light around you to then adjust the focus to create a high definition photo for you. So an HD photo. Um, again, if your camera is able to do this. So if when you open your camera app, if you don't see one of these icons, then that just means your particular device doesn't have this capability. Um, so if you tap on this and turn it on, it'll take a high definition photo for you. Um, if you turn it off, it's just taking a regular photo for you. Then the final icons here towards the bottom right, if you see any kind of symbol that shows um, sort of a swirling arrows, whether it's with a camera or just by itself, the swirling arrows, that's a symbol for flipping between your front, <clears throat> sorry, your front facing or your back facing or rear facing camera. Um, again, not every device may have both a front facing and rear facing camera. So depending on your device, this might be another button that you don't see when you open the camera app. Um, but if you do have both cameras on the front and back of your device, this is the icon that you would tap in order to switch between the two. So if you wanted to take a photo of an object, you're gonna to wanna to use the rear facing camera to then point at that object and take the photo or the video. If you use the front facing camera, you're more than likely taking what's known now as a selfie, where you're taking a picture of yourself at a very close distance because you're the one holding the device. Um, and that's usually what people use the front facing camera for is just taking a picture of themselves. Um, I guess since we're talking about so many icons, I just want to make sure, uh, Kevin or, or Jennifer, are there any questions in the chat right now? Not at the moment. Okay. So now we're going to talk about, when I say modes for camera, what I'm talking about here are, these are the different types of photos and videos that you can take using your device. Now, like I said earlier, depending on the type of device you have, some of these might not be available to you. Um, and in a moment, I'll show you examples of how you can switch between these different types of photos or videos. Um, but if you do have this capability on your device, um, there's, of course, the first bullet point here, there's a regular photograph, which is just a simple point and shoot. So you're pointing your camera at an object, and then you tap that capture button to then take the photograph. It's just one of the, the average typical photos that you would take. The second bullet point here, talking about a portrait, or on some devices, it's called live focus. Um, now, this is a more professional looking photograph because what it's going to do is it's going to focus on an object in the foreground. And when I say foreground, I mean closer to the camera. And then the background, the any objects that's further away from the camera are all going to be blurred or out of focus. So it creates that more professional, maybe editorial look of a photo where everything in the foreground is in very sharp focus, but things behind it are kind of blurred. Um, not every device can do that, obviously, but if your device shows that option, that's what you're referring to. Um, and this is best used on a specific object. So you're not going to use this on a landscape or something where all the objects are far away. You're going to want to do this um, for maybe a person, if you're taking a picture of a friend or a family member, 
um, or if you're taking a picture of an object next to you. Now, the third bullet point here is a panoramic photo. It's a wide angle photograph used to capture a large image. And this is what you would probably use if you wanted to take a picture of a landscape or if there was um, sort of a, a big scene of something in front of you and you wanted to make sure you got all of it. Some of you may see the, these photographs. They're the ones that are like a really, really, really long rectangle. Um, it, it is a slightly more complicated process. So I would recommend if you're new to taking pictures with your device, play around with some of these other options first. Panoramic is a little more advanced because you need to have a steady hand. Um, you'll basically start the photo and you're going to slowly hold your hand like this until you're finished capturing everything and you're going to tap that capture button a second time to end the photo. So you need to be able to basically hold your hand steadily as you scan the entire scene in front of you. Um, it's not incredibly difficult, but it is a more advanced photograph. So I, I recommend play around with the other ones. And then when you feel more comfortable, try a panoramic. Um, the fourth bullet point here, night photo. Um, this is a photograph and it's a, a bit self-explanatory um, with an automatic long exposure in order to capture images during low light. So it'll basically... Again, if some of you are familiar with using a film camera, um, a long exposure just means that the shutter will stay open longer so that more light comes into the camera. Typically, a photograph, the shutter will just go whoop, whoop. But if you do a long exposure, it's going to open up and stay open for a little while and then close and end the photograph. Um, so you're just basically taking a longer photograph um, in order to capture a crisper image, especially if it's very dark. Um, this is another one where not every device is going to be able to do this. Um, but if you have that option, it's great for when you're taking photos at night. Uh, the next bullet point is just recording a regular video. You'll see um, video as one of your options. You'll tap on it. And then now, when you tap on the capture button, that big circle at the bottom, you'll start the video. And when you're ready to end the video, you'll tap on that capture button a second time to then end the video. That same action would be used to do a, <clears throat> sorry, to do a slow motion video. The only difference with a slow motion video is that after you finish uh, recording the video, so you tap that capture button a second time to end the video, your device will automatically readjust the entire video so that it's in slow motion. Um, it's a very cool feature. Again, not every device is going to be able to do it. Um, and then time lapse is the same thing, but in the opposite. So you're recording your video, and then when you tap the capture button the second time to end the video, your device will automatically speed up the video so that the entire thing is at hyperspeed. And this will only be capable, I'm sorry, only devices with this capability will have it. So um, some of you who maybe have a device that's maybe six to 10 years old, you probably won't see some of these more advanced options. Um, but yeah, I, in a moment, I'm going to show you some examples. So you'll see um, a few different devices and what they have. Um, here, actually, before I, I move on, because I know this slide in particular has a lot of information. Um, Jennifer, any questions in the chat right now? Uh, yes, uh, nice photo on my phone. Where do I find this? Ah, so great question. Um, I will I will answer that in a moment because I'm going to have a in um, some of these next slides. I'll have picture examples of where you can find some of these things I was just talking about. 
Um, so I'll make a point to specifically point that out once we get to that slide. Uh, any other questions though? What does the square setting do? The, the square setting? Yes, the square setting. Oh, I think I know what you're talking because it's not something that I have here, but I, I some devices. Um, so one of these options that I'm talking about here, there's another one called square. Um, and all it's doing is it's actually forcing your photograph to be in a perfect square. So most pictures are going to be that I think it's like four by six something like that is like the dimensions of a typical photograph. Um, if you use the square feature, it's going to be a perfect square where all the sides of your photo are the same length. Um, and that's purely all it's for. Um, most people use uh, square photos if they're posting to Instagram, um, which is a social media uh, application. Um, and it's just all the pictures in Instagram are squares. So that's why um, there's a square option. So if you're taking a picture purely to put it on Instagram, you can take it as a square photo so that you're not changing the dimensions after the fact. But good question, because some of you might also have that there. Uh, another question. Else? Oh, yeah. Yeah, another question is, can slow-mo and time-lapse recording revert back to normal mode? Ah, that is a good question. N I believe not, because you're actually, you're choosing the option before you um, record the video. If you have um, sort of video editing software and you're, you know, comfortable using those editing softwares, I'm sure there is a way to undo that slow-mo or the time-lapse. Um, but because you're choosing it before and not after, I'm fairly certain you can't just remove the slow motion or remove the, the, the speed up. Um, you can adjust it. So you can tap on the video and edit it so that um, a lot of times, for example, with the slow-mo, um, people will choose where in the video the slow-mo begins. So for example, um, somebody's doing, um, let's say you're recording a skier and they're about to go off a jump. You'll choose when you click on editing the video. And again, this is advanced. So if some of this information is, is kind of going over your heads, don't, don't get panicky. This is only as you explore your device more and more and you want to play around with things, then you can start editing your videos and things like that. So don't get too nervous if, or, you know, ashamed if you don't know how to do these things. But um, if you record a slow-mo video and then you go to edit it, you should be able to choose where in the video the slow motion begins. So in my example, a skier is about to go over a jump. As they're going down the jump, they'll be going at normal speed. And then the moment they're in the air is when the slow motion begins. And now you're slowly seeing the skier do like a backflip or something like that. Um, you can edit it that way. However, to my knowledge, when you edit, it's, it doesn't give you the option to just completely remove the slow motion. It's just showing you or it's giving you the option of when to start the slow motion within your video. Um, yeah. Good question, though. Anything we have else? Another question. Uh -huh. um, when taking a panoramic photo, do you hold the button down while moving the camera, or do you tap it once and move it, and then tap it to end it? Ah. So this might be a little different on um, each device, but to my knowledge, most devices, you're going to tap at the end. Cause it's the same thing like with a video, you don't have to hold your finger down while you're recording the video. You're just tapping, scanning, and then tapping again when you're done. Um, 
the hardest part of the the panoramic is just keeping your hands steady you will see as you're taking the the panoramic in your phone there's going to be this little line on your screen and it's going to help you keep your hands steady so if you see the line start to drop down you'll it's basically telling you that your hand is dropping down so like we'll start lifting it back up again so you're staying on the same field and then if the line goes up same thing you're holding you're lifting up too much you have to bring your hand down again um so it will help you stay steady but that's going to be the hardest part of a panoramic is holding your hand steady across the whole image anything else jennifer before i go on um I also have an icon that has a circle with dots around it and a line across it. Is it one of these modes? Say that one more time, Jennifer, sorry. I also have an icon that has a circle with dots around it with a line across it. Is it this one of these modes? A circle. That, oh. So that is actually your filters. So not every device, I didn't go into filters during this presentation, just because I felt that that was an, an even more advanced feature. Um, but that uh, uh, symbol, so what she's talking about, or he or she uh, is talking about is um, you'll see a symbol, it almost looks a little bit like um, the Olympic rings, it's not as many rings. I think it's only like three circles, but there are three circles sort of stacked on top of each other. Um, and then some of them have lines going through it. And then I think one of them is just the perfect circle. Um, but this is a symbol for filters. And you're basically going to add a color filter over your photo. Um, so if you wanted to take a, um, a sepia tone picture, and if some of you don't know what sepia tone means, it's just like a like a brown color, like one of those like uh, the wild, wild west. When you see one of those like old time photos and they got that like kind of brown color to it, that's what sepia tone is. Or if you want to take a black and white photo um, or like a rose tinted photo, um, there's a few different kinds of filters where you're just basically changing the colors of the picture. And you can choose a filter before you take the picture. You can do this afterwards, but you can also do it before. And that's what those, those circles represent. If you click on it, it'll give you options for what filters you can put on top of your pictures. Anything else, Jennifer? Uh, yes. What does the three interlocking circle in my case, on top of my iPhone, do. Oh, okay. I think that's the same. Sorry, yeah. The three circles interlocking. That's the filters. Sorry, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. When taking a panoramic photo, do you also turn the camera? Uh, I, if I'm understanding the question correctly, yes. Because when you're when you're tilting like this, you're you're basically you're you're moving the phone, which has the camera in it around um if you mean tilting like tilting like this then no because you want to like i said you want to make it as level as possible um so you're not so much tilting the camera as it is you're moving your arms across because if you tilt the camera it's too you're going to potentially throw the image off of its axis so the easiest way to take a panoramic is to try and hold your body as steady as possible. And then you're actually moving your chest in a sort of a scanning motion because you're trying to keep your arms as level as possible so that you're just doing a straight line across and you're not kind of moving in like a, yeah. Anything else? Yeah, another question. Why would I want to use the live button? When I first got my iPhone, it must have been on because my photos were mini videos, but now I email to people and they're standalone photos. Ah, yeah. So that's a, a separate feature um, that's only on Apple devices called live photo. Um, not to be confused with what I mentioned up here. Oops, sorry, go back again. 
Um, not to be confused with what I mentioned here with live focus. So live photo is exactly what that question kind of quickly uh, summarized. It's really when you take a photo, you're actually taking like a two second or three second little video clip. Um, and you're kind of in the way Apple thought of it is that you're capturing an actual moment as opposed to just taking a, a straight picture. Um, on an iPhone, I'll have a, an example of what it looks like on an iPhone. So I'll let you know how you can turn off live photo if you don't want your pictures to be like that and you just want them to be regular photos. Um, but just know that that's a feature only in Apple devices. Um, and it's, like I said, it's if people wanted to capture like a full moment as opposed to it just being a picture. Um, but you'll notice those of you who are Apple users, if you take a, a picture as a live photo, when you attempt to send it to someone who um, uses an Android phone or just uses a device that's not an Apple device, it will send as a regular photo. The person on the other end won't see it as like a little video clip. They're only going to see it as a regular picture. And again, that's because live photo is only an Apple thing. It doesn't um, work with Android devices. Okay, another question is, there's a 1x in the middle of the picture. What does this mean and how can we change it? Is it the size of the picture? 1x in the middle of the picture. That's difficult to know exactly what they're referring to, but um, there's a chance that it might be the... Um, so a lot of camera apps will use uh, a square. On this device, maybe it, there's an X. But um, typically, when you, when you open the camera app, um, I might actually... It might be best if I move on in the presentation so you can see some pictures, because I feel like some of these questions now are around sort of like... What is this on my screen? What is that on my screen? So here, I might, I'm going to pause, I think, for more questions. And I'll, because I think I might be answering these questions in a moment with these next few slides. Um, so here, um, real quick, before I go into the, um, the different examples of what it might look like on your device, this slide here is just showing you, so after you take the photo or the video, how would you then view that photo or video. So this slide here is showing you to view the photos and videos you've captured, tap the small square that displays a preview of your most recently captured photo or video. This preview square or gallery as it's called in your device is usually located towards the bottom right or left of your screen within the camera app. And it's usually somewhere next to your capture button. So you see here in this um, little picture that I have as an example, you have the big white circle in the center, which is the capture button. And then towards the right of that, you see this little square. And inside that square is a preview of a photo. And in this example, this was the most recent photo that this individual took. So that's why it's showing it right here. And you would just click on this square and then it would open up a gallery of all the pictures or videos that you've taken. And you'll be able to scan through them, look through them. Um, as you get more comfortable, you can start editing some of them um, or you can send them to people. But that's how you would look at your photos and videos after you've taken them. And then now I'm going to go through a few examples of what it may look like on your device, depending on the type of device you have. So this first example here is uh, of an iPhone. Um, and as, as the slide suggests, it'll be very similar on an iPad as well. Obviously, it'll be a much bigger screen, but it, the layout would be pretty much the same. Um, you see here, here's that those three circles that a few questions were referencing. 
So this is what I was talking about, where it almost looks like the way the Olympic rings are set up, except it's only three circles, not the full six or five. Um, and then there's the the timer that I mentioned, so the little clock face. This circle here in the center, where it almost looks like a bullseye, this is actually what we were talking about earlier, the live photo, the one that's only available for Apple users. So right here, this, this bullseye that you see at the top center, if you tap on this and a line goes through it, that means you've turned off live photo. So any pictures you take will just be regular photographs. They won't, um, they won't be those little two second, three second video clips. It's just gonna be a regular photograph. Then when you tap on this circle again, and there isn't a line going through it, you've now turned live photo back on, and now any photo you take is going to be um, a two second or three second little video clip. You can edit the photo afterwards to turn off live photo as well. And then here you see HDR, and that's that high definition resolution that I mentioned. And then here the lightning bolt is for the flash. And so now towards the right here, you see uh, at the top, there's the, the camera with the swirling arrows. And that's the switching back and forth between the front facing or the rear facing camera. This black square at the very bottom here, that's the preview that I mentioned or the gallery that I mentioned. So you would click on this to see the, the photos or videos that you've taken. And then you'll see here where it says the, the word photo. And then next to it, it says portrait. And right before it, it says video. On an iPhone or an iPad, this is how you would switch between those different modes that I was talking about before. So on an iPhone, if you wanted to take a portrait, you would tap on the word portrait and then now, when you tap on the capture button, the photo you take will be a portrait. Or the same thing, if you tap on the word video, now when you tap on the capture button, you'll be recording a video. And this will be more or less the same for all iPhones and iPads. Um, if you have a much, much older generation iPhone or iPad, it may look slightly differently just because your device hasn't been able to um, take on the most recent updates from Apple. Um, but you'll see that there still will be a lot of similarities to how the device is laid out. Now, many of you might have Android devices. Um, so I'm going to go through a few different examples of what an Android device might look like when you open up your camera app. As you see here, it's a little similar. However, there are some differences. So we'll start over here on the left. The top left, you'll see there's a camera icon with two arrows going in opposite directions. This is that button you would tap in order to switch between the front facing or rear facing camera. So you see here, it's still an image of a camera with arrows, but it's, it is set up slightly differently. Same thing with the lightning bolt. There's a lightning bolt, but then instead of a line going through it, there's that no symbol with the circle and a line. And that's signifying that in this example, the flash has been turned off. Um, to be honest, for this particular device, I'm not sure what this hand touch um, icon is for. I believe it's to um, to uh, heighten the focus of your photo. But um, since I'm not uh, a Samsung user, I'm not 100% sure what this version of Galaxy was referring to with this. But I believe it's to focus your uh, photograph. Um, and then here you see it, it shows the, the words HDR or sorry, the letters HDR, but it's also showing you that symbol I showed you earlier, where it's that sun 
with a shadow moon right behind it. And this is to turn on and off that high definition photograph. Um, a gear is pretty much the international symbol for settings. Um, so if you see any sort of mechanical gear symbol, that's signifying settings. Um, up here, you'll see uh, on this particular galaxy, they have uh, for the night mode, they actually have a symbol for it instead of it being a mode. On this device, in order to switch between um, portraits or panoramic, um, you would actually click on the word mode and then it would open up a window where you can choose what type of photograph or type of video you're taking. And then down at the bottom here, this black square is that gallery preview that I mentioned as well. And if you see, the, the capture button looks different on this device as well. It's still a big circle in the bottom center, but it's also accompanied with this picture up here. So on this device, if you were taking a photograph, you would tap this button. But if you were recording a video, you would tap this button up here. So this, if, you, if you're a person that owns a Samsung Galaxy, just notice that there are a lot of differences from what we were talking about earlier. You've got a separate video button. You've got this uh, separate photo button. But the layout still has a lot of similarities to what we were talking about. This is a Galaxy 6. So if you see, if I switch between the two real quick, the layout, similar, but they made some changes. So now that flipping between um, the front and back facing camera, that button has moved over here. You still have that separate mode button that you would click on in order to choose between um, portrait mode or panoramic mode. The, the gallery has now switched all the way over here, but it's still that little square you still have a separate caption, um, <clears throat> sorry, capture button for the uh, photographs versus videos. And then you see here, they've just changed some of the symbols. So you still have the gear for settings, the lightning bolt for the flash. You have a little uh, clock face to turn on and off the timer. You have the high definition photo. And then here, this is for effects. So this is if you wanted to, like I mentioned earlier with the, um, the filters and adding more sort of edits to your photos. Um, as you get more and more comfortable with taking pictures, feel free to explore things like this, the filters and the effects. Um, the only reason why I'm not going into it in detail right now is because it is more advanced uh, and there's a lot of information to, to cover Here is a Galaxy 10. So here again, you go from 6 to 10. There are similarities, but they did change a lot. So on a, on a Galaxy 10, they've now made the capture button by itself, just one big capture button. And then now when you switch between the different modes, you'll see here that it's more similar to the iPhone where you have all of the words lined up here and you're just tapping on the different words. And you notice here, one of them is night mode. So for that person that was wondering about night mode, if your device has that capability, it should be in the lineup here of the, the different words that you can click on. Um, and then again, you've got the, so up here, this one would be for the effects or filters. Um, Full, I believe, would be for um, zooming in and out. So full screen versus, you know, uh, closing some of your screen. Um, the little clock face would be for, uh, again, the timer. And then you have the lightning bolt. On this device, you're able to do the auto feature that I mentioned. So that's why there's a little A next to that lightning bolt symbol. So on this device, they're able to have auto flash. And then there's the gear symbol again for settings. Uh, that flip 
So this is another uh, example of a different icon for flipping between the front and rear facing cameras. It's still that sort of swirling arrows. And then here, instead of a square for their gallery, it's a circle, but it's still, this is what you would click in order to view the, um, the different photos that you've already taken. And here's a, a Google Pixel. You'll notice it's very similar to the Galaxy. There's just, things are just placed a little differently. So the, the, uh, the gallery is on the other side. And then here's the button for flipping between the two. Got the capture button again. Switching between the different modes. And you've got your other tools up here. So this person has turned off the timer. Um, raw, I imagine, um, is for, if you tap on this, it's probably going to switch between um, HD versus raw. Um, so on a Google Pixel, if you tap on this, you're switching between an HD photo or raw or basically like a regular photograph. Um these here, I believe, well, there's the flash, that, that lightning bolt, but these two in the center um, are probably more um, specific to the Google Pixel device. This here, because it's a uh, thermometer, would refer to the temperature of the, the photograph itself. So do you want the colors to feel very warm and sort of red? Or would you like them to be more cool and more on the blue tone side? Um, the circle in the center, I believe, refers to focus. Again, just maintaining focus on the device, on the um, the photograph. Here is showing you the LG Android device, and again, very similar to the others. There's just slight differences to the, the types of symbols they use and just the layout. So again, they flipped the two. Um, where this little lock symbol is, that's actually the gallery. Um, in this example, I think um, the, the last photo they took was of this little lock symbol. So I'm not sure um, <clears throat> why the example shows a lock, but this is where you would have your gallery and then this is the flipping between front and back cameras, switching between the different modes of the photos. And then again, timer, turning on and off the flash, your filters, and then uh, settings. This one here is showing you the Motorola Android. Um, a lot simpler. There's a lot fewer uh, um, options. But on this device, you notice, so you've got the capture button in the center. And then if you tap this little camera to the right, that's how you choose the different modes. So if you tap on the camera, you can tell it, am I taking a regular photo? Am I taking one of those professional looking photos? Am I taking a slow motion video, a panoramic photo, uh, a regular video? And then to turn on and off the flash, or the timer or the HD uh, options, you would tap on these up here at the top. Um, so now I'm gonna attempt to do a live tutorial. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and see. Get perfect. So, there we go. So now on everyone, you should be looking at, um, I have a, an Android tablet here with me today, and I'm opening up the camera app on my device. So, and now here's the little plant that I was going to take a picture of. So I'm going to go back again real quick to my home screen just so you can see that process again. So here I am on the home screen of my tablet. And then I've looked at all my different apps. And then you see in the top right or towards the top right, there's my camera app 
which looks like that symbol that I mentioned will probably be the most common camera app symbol you're going to come across. That gray circle with the black camera icon in the center of it. So when you tap on it, there we go, tap on it again, uh, it'll open up like this. And just waiting for it to load so all of you can see the plant. Oh, is it not? Hmm. Let's try that again. I don't know why it's doing that. Oh. Hmm. Sorry, everyone. Technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, it looks like my my tablet got kicked out of the uh, the Zoom meeting or something. So I'm gonna try and get myself back in. There we go. I'll try that one more time. Screen, start now. There we go. Camera. Perfect. So as you see here on your screens, um, in my tablet towards the bottom, we have two capture buttons. So this is yet another example of what it may look like in your device. So I've got a capture button for if I'm taking a regular photograph, which is the big gray circle towards the bottom there with a little image of a camera. And then to the left of that, there's another big gray circle with the image of a little video uh, camera inside it. And that's if I were to be taking a video right now. Um, and then towards the very top of the screen, I'll here, I'm going to bring it down a little bit so you can see it in relation. Um, oh, it looks like my internet does not, <laughs> it doesn't like having two devices on there at the same time. So I'm sorry, that didn't work out perfectly. Um, but hopefully you didn't see that for a moment where um, you're basically pointing your camera at an object and then there's those capture buttons towards the very bottom that you can then tap in order to either capture the photo or capture the video. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had a sort of live um, presentation of the, that process as well. So I'm sorry that the internet didn't let it go through the entire part, but um, I'm gonna go back to the presentation real quick. And, um, oh. Uh, and now is actually a good time. Let's pause actually. So here, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, let's field some questions. Jennifer, are there any new questions? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Um, capture mode. What is capture mode? Oh, so when it just, when I talk about capture, um, it's just taking the photograph. So, um, when I use the word capture, I mean, you know, um, recording the video or taking the photograph. That's what the term like capture means. And then are there free sites where we can store our photos? Great question. Yes, there are many. Um, so if you're an Apple user, um, you'll have a certain amount of free space within iCloud. Um, but there are many other um, companies where you basically are getting that same service. It's this digital space that you can save your information. Um, so uh, Google Drive is one. Dropbox is one. Um, trying to think of other really popular ones. Uh, oh, OneDrive. 
uh, is the Microsoft version. So one, like the number one, one drive. Um, yeah, those are the, the most popular ones that are coming up to my mind right now. But there are many companies that are like that. And they'll all offer you a certain amount of space for free. And then if you need more, you'll have to purchase extra storage space. Um, one thing that I want to point out when it comes to storage, photos and videos are the things that eat up the most storage space. So just be aware of that. If you want to store your photos in one of those digital spaces, you will most likely need to spend money on it because that amount of free space you get is probably not big enough to store all of your photos and videos. Okay, and then top right, what are the four symbols? Top right. Oh, I think I know what they're referring to. Um, here, let me go back to my presentation. I believe they're talking about these four symbols in the top right. Um, so on this Samsung Galaxy, it's showing you, so um, this first one here with the little moon icon is the, um, the night mode. So on this particular device, you would tap on here to turn on and off the night mode. Um, these icons, well, I know this one here all the way to the right is talking about the battery. So this person's battery is very low. <laughs> Um, and then to be honest, I'm not a hundred percent sure what these two icons are referencing. It looks like this one's talking about film in some way, cause that's the image of a, a, a piece of film. So it probably has to do with editing a video. Um, but this is specific to the galaxy four. So these icons are not sort of like international symbols. These are only for the, the Galaxy 4 device has these symbols. Um, but it looks like these are status icons because this is telling you the status of the battery. Um, so these seem to be status icons. Good question. And what is active photo on a Moto G Power? Oh, those would be so similar to uh, live photo that I was talking about with um, Apple devices, where it's a it's a, a photograph that is active. So it's technically it's like a two to three minute clip instead of it being just a regular photograph. Um, but that's yeah, it's like basically Motorola's version of live photo. Um, but because they're two separate systems, they are not compatible with each other. So like I mentioned before, if you're an Apple user and you try to send someone a live photo, even if they're one of these Motorola people, it'll still send to them as a regular photo, not as a live photo. And then same thing with Motorola, when you're sending it to an Apple user, it's going to be sent as a regular photo, not as a sort of you know, live photo where it's moving. Thank you so much, Peter. This has been so great. And these questions oh, are yeah, great. Yeah. Um, we really appreciate you doing this and spending this time with us. 